So if this looks familiar, you have a ream or a rude hot water heater. You light the pilot light and it immediately goes out. You're probably in the right place. So here's the scenario. You have a propane or a gas, natural gas hot water heater. You come home, you go to take a shower, no hot water. So what's the first thing you do? You check, you make sure that, uh, that you have a good gas supply, whether it's propane, make sure your propane's not out, whatever. And then you come in and figure out, oh, my pilot light must be out. So let's check that. So to check your pilot light on one of these, on this particular model, you grab a hold of this cover, squeeze it, and it'll slide on out. Set that out of the way. And then you're going to peel back this insulation right here. And in that window there, you can see that there is no pilot light. So let's see how to fix that. Okay, so now you've got everything um, open and you can get to it. Go ahead and turn your gas valve all the way over to pilot. You know you're in pilot when you can push the pilot button down. If it's set anywhere else, you cannot push that little yellow button down or whatever color it is on yours. And what happens <clears throat> is when you line this up and you push that pilot button down, it opens the gas solenoid in here which allows gas to flow down to your burner and to your pilot light. So push down on the pilot light, press the igniter, and you should see the pilot light light. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to hold that pilot light down for about 60 seconds. So what happens during that 60 seconds is that pilot flame heats the thermocouple which is attached to the end of this tube. There's copper tube on the left on your gas control valve. This goes down into that, sits right over top of that pilot light and it heats that up and that creates a voltage. It's somewhere around 25 millivolts DC if you want to check it yourself and heats that up. So the problem is is if this thermocouple loses that voltage for whatever reason, it shuts this off and when you lift the pilot light up, that flame will, uh, will extinguish. Theory with that is, is if your pilot light blows out, you don't want to fill your closet, your house with the propane or the natural gas that should be going to that pilot light. So how do we fix that? So here's the problem with these valves. Um, I had this problem, everything appeared to work fine. I was actually able to get it relit one morning and uh, when I came home that afternoon from work it would not relight again. So did a little bit of internet searching. I found another video on YouTube and I'll link that up here uh, in a card that talked about the emergency cutout for these um, gas valves. So what happens is there is a sensor inside the tank, it screws in on the back side of this gas control valve, that is there to detect an over temperature condition. Again, we've all heard horror stories about these hot water heaters that over pressurize, they overheat, and they end up exploding and taking off like a rocket. That is one of several safeties in there to prevent that. The problem with these is those emergency cutouts are apparently faulty. So I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot that and at least you'll be a few steps closer if you do finally get a hold of somebody who can come fix this. So in the past this thermocouple connection just went in and tied directly to the bottom of the solenoid in here. And what this design has done, and again this isn't a a ream specific gas valve. This is actually made by SIT Group, which I think is an Italian manufacturer. And you can see this is the, the connector end of it. Thermocouple. So you take that off. There's no gas flowing through here. You don't have to worry about shutting gas off. There's a little white connector in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. <clears throat> it's got two wires that both go into that 
um, emergency cutoff. There is a small wafer on each side that actually get, sets between the thermal couple and the coupling. What happens is this goes bad and when that goes bad it breaks the electrical connection between your thermal couple and your solenoid. So these thermocouples don't go bad. Or I'm sure they do go bad, but they don't go bad. That's not the primary problem with that. It is this emergency cutoff. So a couple options that you have there to troubleshoot this. You can actually cut these wires and twist them, strip them off and um, time together and put that back in there. Um, another thing that you can do, and this is what I've done, is you can just find a small nail. This happens to be an aluminum pop rivet. And hold that in there and then reconnect your thermal couple. The problem with these is these thermal couples, the, the bolt that holds it in, the nut that holds it in, I'm sorry, is not long enough to completely make that connection. So put that in there, snug it down just a just a touch, and all you're doing is kind of bridging where that emergency cutoff wafer used to be. So put that in there, snug it up. It doesn't have to be super tight, just enough to make the connection, and then we're going to try to relight our um, pilot light. Okay, at this point we've got the emergency cutout bypassed. We've got something in there uh, to connect those. If we go ahead and try to relight our pilot light, we can see that it does in fact light. Release the plunger and your pilot light stays lit. Now, at this point, if you have done these steps and your pilot light works now, the problem is that emergency cutout switch. Um, that's all it, that it could be because your thermocouple is working here just as it's designed. That emergency cutout is bad. At this point, you're going to have to call Ream if you're still under warranty. I think my tank and my system has a six year warranty. Of course, the problem with that right now, Ream is overwhelmed with all the calls on these particular water heaters, which is what prompted me to kind of make this video and the corresponding uh, Facebook site was to help people out because there's nothing worse than not having any hot water. Um, I do not recommend leaving this in this condition. Um, you could probably leave it here long enough to heat up a tank of water and get a shower. But you need to get a hold of your plumber, your gas company, uh, your propane supplier, some qualified technician to come out and and check on this. They may have, if they're a ream provider, they may have these gas valves in stock. Um, you can try to contact ream directly and get them to send you one. I don't know how that works. I have not had any luck doing that at this point. So that's what you got. Faulty uh, electrical cutout is causing the whole thing to work. This water heater is exactly a year old. The date of manufacture was December 30th of 2020. I installed this on the 26th of January of 2021. 26th of January 2022 is when it quit working. So one year to the day, that seems to be part and parcel for most of the complaints that I have been able to find on um, on the internet, be it on Reddit or YouTube or Facebook or the Better Business Bureau, all of that. And let me say one thing. I'm not making this video to slam Ream or any other company. I don't think that there's any malice on their part. I think they know at this point that they have a faulty gas valve. I think they're trying to fix it. They're like everybody else with, with the Omicron variant of COVID going around. I'm sure that they're short-staffed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think they're trying to figure out a solution. They don't have a solution yet because probably every propane and natural gas water heater that they have 
has this valve or one similar that they're now having problems with. So I'm sure that they're trying to figure out a solution to it. Their call centers obviously are overwhelmed. Their poor social media people are tired of saying, we're sorry for the inconvenience. Please keep trying to call the 1-800 number. Um, I get that. But at the end of the day, I think Ream is a stand-up company. I think they will make this all right. But we need hot water today, and this is one way to do it. Again, I don't recommend leaving anything like this. If you're not comfortable doing this type of work, this is probably not the project to start on. Um, but pretty simple. You're not breaking any gas connections. Uh, but don't leave it like this. Get it checked out by a qualified plumber or gas service provider. Um, and good luck. Post in the comments down below if you've had this similar problem if this helped you out, um, there is a Facebook group. I think it's called Ream Rude Hot Water Heater or Water Heater Issues. So uh, check that out. Drop some comments. If you've had good luck finding uh, an email address, a phone number, somebody to contact at Ream that can help uh, fix this problem or you found a local uh, service provider <clears throat> that can fix this in a timely manner, Please share that information with uh, everyone else so that uh, folks aren't having to go check into hotels or go to the, their parents' house or whatever else to get a hot shower. So, hope this helps. There you go. Have a good one.